Hi there, and welcome to an introduction to PowerEdge server updates. My name's Sean McKenzie, and before we get started, we're going to have a look at some reasons why we should keep our PowerEdge servers up to date. We're going to have a look at what the benefits are for keeping your PowerEdge server updated, where to find updates and how to download them, how to be automatically updated when new drivers become available, the main differences between drivers and firmware, and finally, for certain models, the installation order of the drivers. Firstly, we're going to have a look at the benefits of updating. We are constantly finding ways to optimize your hardware. Keeping drivers and firmware up to date will help your machine run at its best. As time goes by, if any bugs are reported within the systems, software is created to ensure that these are resolved. The information for these fixes is generally found within the release notes of the driver. As we're always looking to give you all the tools you need, updating can at times provide new features to simplify and enhance the server's functionality. And finally, security. One of our main priorities is ensuring your systems are safe and protected. An up-to-date machine will be far less at risk of unwanted access. So let's have a look at where to find these updates. All of our drivers are available to download at dell.com forward slash support. Navigating to this page will bring you to the main support screen. When on the page, it should show you recently searched products on the left hand side to save you looking manually. If not, you can manually search for the system in the search box by typing in either the model or the system service tag. Alternatively, you can browse all products and look for your device from the list shown. For this example, we'll be using the PowerEdge R740. Here you will have the option again to enter the service tag, which will show you all the drivers specific to your machine that came in the original order. You can, however, bypass this by selecting the driver and downloads option. By not entering the service tag, you'll notice the vast amount of drivers found in the list. This is because it's showing all drivers, not just those specific to your machine. You can enter the keyword for the driver you require. Also, you can filter the list to suit your operating system, as well as the category and the file format. It's also possible to filter the list to show only urgent downloads, which are ones we recommend be updated when possible. If you want to be automatically notified of these updates, scrolling to the bottom of the page should show you an option for create a subscription. Follow these steps to set up automatic notifications that new drivers have become available. You'll notice an option above to change the product type if it's necessary. Firstly, select your operating system. For this example, we'll be using Windows Server 2016. You can now select what specific drivers you wish to be notified about, or alternatively, you can select all. After selecting Continue, you can customize your subscription preferences. Here, you can give your subscription a custom title. Just for the example, we'll call it Server Updates. Double check the correct email address is listed. If not, you will have to create an account at the top right of the support page. Once it's all set up, review your choices are correct and hit save. You should now start receiving scheduled emails informing you of available updates. And now we're gonna have a look at the difference between drivers and firmware. Firmware is almost identical to a driver, but doesn't have that operating system interaction. It's a code that's directly implemented on a component and works in the background on the hardware level. A device driver is a particular form of software application that is designed to enable interaction between the operating system and the hardware devices. Think of it as an interactive bridge between what you can see on the screen and what's going on inside the server. At this point, you may be curious if there is an order to install these drivers. The simple answer is, if your server is 12th generation and above, then no, they can be installed in any order. However, if you're using a 10th or 11th generation system, it 
it is important to follow a specific installation order. I'll add a link to the Dell Knowledge Base article in the description below that will list the correct installation sequence. Now let's have a look at updating via the iDRAC. For iDRAC 9, press F2 when the server is posting to access the iDRAC login screen. Log in using your credentials, the default username being root and password Calvin. This will take you to the iDRAC 9 dashboard where you will select maintenance at the top and then select system update. Once you're on the maintenance page, select system update and then manual update. For this example, we'll choose the location as HTTPS and insert the HTTPS address as downloads.dell.com. Scroll down and click on check for update. Select the required drivers and click on install or install on next reboot. Please bear in mind, installing on the next reboot can cause your server to take up to a few hours to start, depending on the amount of updates. If you're using an older version of the iDRAC, the process is pretty much the same, but I'll quickly go through it so you can see the layout. When the iDRAC is launched, log in using your credentials. Once the dashboard is loaded, select the server drop-down on the left-hand panel. Then select the iDRAC settings option and select update and rollback. Again, for this example, we'll use the HTTPS method. The other methods will be shown in detail in the guides in the description below. Like before, select HTTPS on the right and in the address bar, enter downloads.dell.com. Check for updates, just like in the iDRAC 9, and select the required drivers. Again, remembering, when installing server updates, the server won't be usable until they have completed. Another method to deploy updates is by using the Lifecycle Controller. This is an embedded operating system for all Dell servers 11th generation onwards, and it's a software layer between the hardware and the operating system. Through the LCC, you can run diagnostics to help locate possible faults. Deploy an operating system to a machine if an update or change is required. Configure your hardware to run your requirements and specifications. And finally, update firmware, which we'll be showing you in this next example. If the LCC is already installed, tap the F10 key at the post menu to boot into the interface. If the LCC isn't showing, it may need to be enabled. I'll put a link in the description below for a guide on how to do this. Once you have successfully accessed the Lifecycle Controller, you should see this menu on the screen. Here you can see the options we talked about before, like hardware configuration, operating system deployment, and hardware diagnostics. But for now, we're just going to have a look at the firmware update. Once selected, you'll see these three options and you want to select Launch Firmware Update. Step one of three gives us three more options. And for this example, we're going to use FTP Server. Once the FTP server options are listed, in the address field, we're going to type ftp.dell.com and click the Test Network Connection option. This section is optional, but it will run a quick test ensuring that there is a connection to our servers and you are able to access the downloads. Once it's passed successfully, click on OK to close and then click on Next. A list of the available drivers and firmware should now appear. You can click on the checkbox next to the ones you need and hit apply. Please note that the server will restart after you do this. The more updates you've chosen, the longer the machine will take to install them when it boots back up. Depending on the amount of drivers selected and the type of drivers, this process can take anywhere from a few minutes to a few hours. So we do advise that you run this process out with your business hours to ensure that you have no downtime.
And finally, we're going to have a look at applying an update using an ISO image. For this method, we recommend using the USB boot utility Rufus, found at rufus.ie. The driver ISO images required to do this can be found at this repository link, which will be included in the video description below. Once Rufus has been downloaded and installed to a Windows machine, launch the tool and you should see this menu. Insert your USB media, ensuring it's big enough to hold the required file. Rufus should automatically select the appropriate settings. Select the downloaded ISO that is saved to the Windows machine from the repository list. Click Start and wait for the process to finish. Once it's complete, restart your server with the USB inserted and boot to the USB media. And that's everything when it comes to the basics of understanding a PowerEdge server. I've included all the links you'll need referencing these topics in the description below. Here at Dell, we have a huge library of YouTube guides, video tutorials, live webinars, and driver databases, all found at dell.com forward slash support. If you can't find the answer you're looking for there, we have support agents waiting to assist via phone, chat, and social media. Thanks for watching.